Hi, I'm Art Bergeron. Uh, and if you haven't seen this show before, uh, welcome to Frank and Mary here on Nantucket. Uh, my day job as an, is an, as an elder law attorney at Myrick O'Connell, but this is not about my day job. This is about my friends, Frank and Mary. If you haven't, if you haven't seen any of my presentations at the Salt Marsh, you know that Frank and Mary's goal in life is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if that means they live here, they never want to leave this island. Then is, who are the people that you need to know? If you like Frank and Mary, who are the people you need to know? And what are the programs you need to know about so that you can stay on Nantucket for the rest of your life? So a few people here know me. No, many, many people know Allison Forsgren, who has been here like forever um, and has and is, has been kind enough to be my co-host over the last few years. And she finds these great guests. And she's got a wonderful person for us today who is whom you really should know about. Right, because he's got, he's a, he's a, a new person to the kind of the structure of Nantucket government, but is doing something really really important. So, Allison, whom do we have today? Today we have the very first director of diversity, equity, and inclusion on Nantucket. Um, Kamel McCarthy is the man, and um, we're excited to hear about what it is that you're doing or want to do in this new position. It's um, it's a, it's great that you're with us. And and I and as I mentioned to you, Kamal, when we started, I get to ask the first big question, which is, how did you get here? Because there inevitably are all these different stories, right? There are a few of the locals who actually came from here, but most people kind of wandered in somehow through the beach. So, could you just kind of talk about how you got here, how you got to this position? You know. What's, what's great about Nantucket? Oh, what's not? No, I don't want to go there. So it, it just kind of talk about that, if you could. Sure. Well, first of all, I'll start off by saying thank you for having me. Um, I've heard about Frank and Mary and being on, in this position and having this opportunity is really great. So thank you. Um, to answer your question, um, my mom met my stepdad here in Nantucket and I moved to the island when I was 13 years old. So. I've been here since middle school. Um, I had Barbara White as a, my homeroom and history teacher. I, don't know, I know a lot of people have had Barbara White, so I like to mention the fact that I'm um, taught by her as well as by Peter Panchi, and I went through the high school system and came back after college and grad school, and I'm now writing my dissertation on the African Meeting House. So I am Nantucket's home for me. That's a great, that's a great backstory. That's a great backstory. And yes, I, we, we've seen, so did you have, Allison, who, who, Joe, is it Joe, Joe, who was the person who, who, who was the, the, who was at the high school and is running NCEA? Joe, Joe Aguirre. Aguirre. Mm -hmm. Did you have Joe Aguirre when you were at the high school? <laughs> he was my principal at one point. Oh yeah. So yeah. So everybody's gone through, you know, he's got all these proud graduates that we have on this show. It's a wonderful thing. So thank you for coming on. And it's, I mean, you know, I love it that there are so many people who are working in town government that really have um, Nantucket as their as their home. I mean, we're really lucky to have so many people um, who care so much about Nantucket involved. So, um, so tell us what it's like to be the first director of such a lofty sounding position. It's new. Uh, the position is new. The uh, responsibilities are new. And quite honestly, I'm just trying to figure it out as I go. Um, I, technically, today has made uh, maybe three months since I've started in this position. Um, my proudest thing so far has been coming up with the mission statement for the office, quite honestly, which is to um, be the primary resource for Nantucket's com diverse communities and organizations and to make sure that our community is being equitable and inclusive of all residents and for employees to feel safe and welcome as well too. That's a nice one. So, so that's been the first thing that I've been um, just, again, my biggest, I think biggest accomplishment since being in the position, but I've been attending a lot of um, webinars, a lot of different trainings, um, doing my own research to get a better understanding of um, diversity, equity, and inclusion. It's, those are, as you mentioned, very loaded words, really. And quite frankly, sometimes they're used interchangeably. So what I'm really making sure that I do is at least know the difference between them. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the most simplified version is that uh, I believe someone put it the, this way that diversity is making sure that everyone's invited to the party. Equity is making sure that 
everyone has a chance to be um, to contribute to picking the songs that are played, whereas inclusion is making sure that everyone has a, a chance to dance. So that's the most <laughs> simplified way to uh, to, to uh, simplify my job title. Uh, and so you mentioned writing your dissertation on the African Meeting House. What um, you know? What is your what is your background? That's a good question. So I did my um, undergrad at Bates in political science, um, and then I went off to UMass Amherst and got a master's degree in labor studies. And right now I'm at Northeastern doing my uh, doctorate in organizational leadership specifically. Um, and it just so happens that the way the program works is that it, was, it is intended that you write your dissertation on the job that you're at. Um, and I was at the African Meeting House as the associate director before coming into this position. And I'm so far along the way that I didn't want to start over. So I decided to just stick to what I was writing about. Wow. Wow. That's actually um, quite an educational background. Thank you. And can, 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 so so I'm, I'm curious, when you're, when, you're th when you're thinking about this job, which obviously has a whole bunch of different pieces to it, do you, can you just talk to, about, talk to us about how you, how you imagine implementing what you just said and 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 is that a, and is that an implementation that only involves i shouldn't say that only that involves government uh that is the offices you know of the government and, and, and that certainly includes the schools right and because you've got a lot of it you've got a lot of folks that are employed at the, at the schools and that's a big function of the of the town is the schools um but does it also include um, 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 making people aware of and connecting people to this work who are in the private sector, because it, it just sounds like it's you, it's a lot, you know, and it and it and it it's one of those things that does sound very lofty until you go through like a year like we had over this past year, and you start saying, boy, this is really important. This is very very day to day, you know, stuff. This is you know, it's it's hard. So I'm just curious about how you. How you think about it right now? So that's a very good question. Um, I think the best way for us to look at it, or the best way that I've been approaching it initially, was to just like I mean, the job is specifically for town government. Let's start off there, uh, as well as making sure that the um, employees of the town feel as though they have an office or a space or a person that they can come to to talk about issues that are related to DEI. Um, so initially, it's a part of, like I mentioned in, early in the mission statement, it's not, it's about reaching the entire diverse community as communities on Nantucket. So whether that's people that are a member of the Latinx community, um, the East, the AAPI, Asian, Asian American Pacific Islander community, Jamaican, uh, Nantucket has a large Jamaican population as well as African American, just black in general, as I like to call, I like to say. So there are many just different um, ethnic groups and minority groups on Nantucket, but this, this position really is also making sure that we're an outlet for uh, not only people of color, but for women as well too, for the LGBTQIA plus community, for people with disabilities. So as you, you, you hit the nail on the head in your question is that it is a very lofty position, quite frankly. Um, and it's, come into, it's my responsibility to figure out how to narrow that, uh, how to make it more focused and more tailored um, to be as, and a resource for private organizations and nonprofits, as, which you also mentioned. So in other words, I'm still figuring it out. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and, so, um, and so how do you see yourself as a resource to people who live in the town? Like if people you know, wanna learn more about what you do or want to help out in some way um how do uh, how do you see yourself in in that position when it relates to the town citizens another good question so what i, I guess i'll answer that in two separate ways one i am doing what i call a dei presentation and so i've gone to the community foundation for nantucket as well as the rotary club just to share what I, i'd like a scope of what the dei office is all about or what we are hoping to do um, and then the second part of my answer will be in regards to creating a listening tour. So I'm formatting up. So the first one, I do a lot of talking. Um, mm -hmm. I just tell people what, like, about myself, um, what DEI is all about, definitions and so forth. Whereas the listening tour, which I'm still working on creating right now, is more me listening. 
and me getting a better understanding of what the community wants a DEI office and director to be doing. Because I can bring all of my, what I think the DEI um, position should be all about, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to match up with what the community members themselves want. So I think that's the primary part of the, me trying to create a listening tour. And I might add also that the town has uh, put out a uh, request for a proposal to get a consultant to specifically help me to narrow um, what this office is supposed to be focusing on. So those are like three separate answers to that question. Uh, and so, so are there other, um, are there other people in your in your, this position that you can look to for guidance? Or I mean, since it's a brand new position and sort of a brand new category of, of, of positions, um, you know, where do you go for inspiration and uh, you know maybe a little guidance? That's a good question. So I go to my supervisor. <laughs> <laughs> So that's the primary person I go to for if there's like a question or if I'm going to start a new idea or something that I think could be interesting for the town, I go to them first. Um, um who is that? I, go ahead. Um, and so who do you go to? I missed that. No, so my supervisor um, is the town manager. So, um, but outside of that, I I am really again not only just figuring it out as, as I go, but also looking at other DEI offices around like the Commonwealth, I know it's around the country as well. As you mentioned, it is a brand new position. Um, I believe Provincetown and Falmouth just created a DEI director position in both of those towns as well. But Cambridge and Boston has already have one. So I researched their website and things that they are doing. Um, I was recently a part of a, um, I believe it's the International City Managers Association um, webinar training with, um, which is specifically focused on inclusion and just a bunch of different people from around the United States um, just sharing their ideas on how to do this work. So it, I have resources at my fingertips. I'm also trying to find resources at the same time. So it's, it's a, just going out and doing my best really and making yeah. the best of it. Well, you got great communication skills. Um, you know, I mean, what else do you need, really? And, and he's and he's a local, and he's a local. That's you know, it's a, that's a wonderful edge, I think. You know, just to be starting off, it gives you kind of instant credibility. You know that you that you know you just you grew up in the system, which is like terrific. So so from I, I'm just curious from the, the from the, the the seminars you've participated in, from the people that you've talked to. Is there, is there, is there one uh, place, you know, a city or a town that you've heard about or that you've heard a presentation about that you and, and you just came out and, 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 and said to yourself, oh, they seem to be getting this right. You know, because I think I suppose that's I, I, that's one of the interesting things about what you're doing is, as you've said, this is new. It's just kind of happening this kind of realization of the importance of, of looking at this, both from the government and from the community perspective is, is just kind of is popping up in a lot of places. Um, so I'm just curious as to whether you found any places and I would, you know, what my, you know, my intuition would be that it would be in larger government structures. It would be in a place like a Cambridge in a, in a, or in a, in a kind of in, in an environment in a larger community where, where they've been looking at these things for, for quite a while and maybe where there was, you know, a lot of, where there was a, a bigger staff. And so it was just kind of included. So I'm just, just curious. So another good question. I think the, um, what I found so far is that really everyone is trying to figure this out together. Uh, and that's probably the best answer. Um, one of the things that one of the presenters in one of the trainings that I recently attended or webinars rather was saying is that if there was a town that had the right answer or a format to follow, then everyone would just go to that uh, site <laughs> and resources and just follow what they're doing. Uh, interestingly enough, even if there was such a place, I don't think that's necessarily going to be adaptable to Nantucket because this island is so unique within itself. Um, so whatever that place or location was, it would have still have to put a Nantucket spin on it to some degree. And I think living here for so long, that has allowed me to do so, um, or uh, that will be, I guess, included in the process. Um, so I do know the individuals that I can turn to in the town, primarily um, whether, again, I mentioned Barbara White or Francis Cartoon or just people that have a better historical aspect of Nantucket and just ask for their advice and their opinion on the process. You know, um, the whole town government set up on Nantucket being its own town, its own county. Um, 
and being 30 miles at sea is really a challenge to all of the departments when it comes to, you know, finding the correct resources and implementing, you know, ideas that could be easy in other places, but are really not that easy here, which leads me to the question, you know, what are the challenges that you've come up with so far when it comes to anything having to do with your position? So I've expressed this before um, with just other members and another good question. And I think my biggest challenge right now is the fact that I don't speak Spanish. Um, Nantucket has a large Spanish speaking population right. and I really want not only English speakers but speakers of multiple languages that are here on the island to see this office as a resource for them. So one of the first things that I did um, when I was creating the mission statement, which I mentioned earlier, was to make sure that it was translated in Spanish on the DEI website as well, I'm um, webpage also. So um, I have gone out and reached to just different Latinx community members. And to my own surprise, there's at least seven or eight different Latinx nationalities that I just didn't, didn't know was on the island. Um, and so just learning that alone or like trying to figure out ways to reach the Latinx community, I think is going to be my biggest challenge for sure. So if you could speak three new languages, what would they be? <laughs> Um, good question. Um, probably Spanish, me one of them. Uh, not, um, I don't know, maybe Russian. Uh, just, I, I, I probably wouldn't know how to learn Russian, actually. <laughs> but I, I'm just going to stick to Spanish for now, and hopefully the other two would just come whenever they are needed. Right, right. No, so, we have a much, much different um, community makeup in the last 10 years than um, you know, the leaps and bounds we've taken when it comes to diversity is, is enormous. So good time for someone like you. you. And, and, and you really speak to the fact that, you know, to any, it's, it's, it's like for folks who, who don't speak Spanish, you know, you, you tend to blend the, 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 the Spanish and the Brazilian population, right? You know, you said to say, oh, well, they just all speak kind of like, not English, but in a way that's similar. Whereas, of course, you talk to the Brazilian speakers or the, you know, the, I don't think there's, a, I don't believe there's a large Azorian population in Nantucket, but I know that in, in, in one of my home communities, there's actually a, a, a real, I don't want to say attention, but a definite com competition between the Brazilian community and the Azorian community, who both speak different versions of Portuguese, you know, who, who unite in the fact that they don't want to be thinking, you know, you don't want to be called Hispanic. They're not Hispanic, you know, that they, but, but, but you really speak to the, the, the fact each community wants to be thought of as their own, I guess, which relates to a question I had. So if people want to connect with you, and this is, you know, the purpose of this show is to, for people to be just kind of aware of things that they might not have been aware of that are on the island. If people want to connect with you, like, how do they, how do they find you? And when you're talking about this listening tour, if I'm one of those groups, how do I get on your tour? Good question. Um, I think before I answer your question, I will like to just quickly point out that Nantucket does have a sizable Cape Verdean population. And as a DEI director, I should probably mention that. Otherwise, they may come, come marching down to the town building looking for me. Um, but they, uh, they, that, um, to reach me, I'm in the town building. I am literally right by Federal Street. Um, my contact information is on the town website as well, too. So um, I am. I, I hope I come off as approachable. So if you see me in the street or in the supermarket, you're welcome to say hi or so forth. What I am doing as far as the tour is concerned is that I am reaching out. I am reaching out to organizations. I am going to be starting off hopefully with a teachers group at the high school. I mean, at the middle school. Sorry, that has. A, I believe it's the anti-racist, anti-bias um, subgroup of some sort that's at the school. And my reason for starting out with them is because they have the um, language already in regards to diversity, equity, and inclusion. I may feel more comfortable talking about it. This is this is a difficult topic, and I think. The one thing that I have learned since being in this position is that its motto is to uh, just get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Quite honestly, sometimes I am uncomfortable as well too, and I am hoping that I don't say the wrong thing. So um, I think by starting off by reaching out to groups, that might be the best approach to start a listening tour, as well as to, as I mentioned earlier, do the presentation on what the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Office is all about. 
But again, I invite organizations like the Rotary Club reached out to me for me to do that presentation. So they're welcome to contact me at any time. Wow. And But I suppose you get to the heart of the question. It, it often is an uncomfortable conversation because you're, sure. you're, you're kind of it, it, a lot of times being 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 forced to confront concerns that you might have about other races, about sexual orientation, that you just as soon pass it, you know? Uh, but but I think, you know, the, I think you're really getting to the point that the bottom line is all of these issues are best confronted when not in a crisis situation, right? Correct. And this position at least is going to have that opportunity for it to be an ongoing dialogue, an ongoing learning process where we can learn from each other experiences and actually share things and learn together to reach shared understandings. So I'm hoping that I will um, be able to champion that process as best as possible. You know, I think it's I think it's it, interesting to point out that um, pretty much everybody is uncomfortable around the topic. I mean, I don't know anyone who, who feels like they're an authority or um, has the answers. So, so um, it was interesting to hear you say that even you sometimes feel um, uncomfortable but i look forward to seeing how you do what you do and um and joining a listening tour at some point in time and if there's anything that we can do to sort of help support you and your efforts um you know i'm sure having you at the salt marsh and coming to the council on aging and you know speaking to some of the pop you know population to whom this show is very popular um would be great for our our viewers what do you think it would be my pleasure to do so and 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 if and and in the meantime and i think that would be great i think it would be wonderful and and i i think if, you, if you're starting this listening tour it would be really interesting i think for us to talk to you six months from now after you've done some of this listening right to just kind of come back and and share with many of the many of the seniors because I know a lot of this the, the a lot of the our folks that who watch are, are Frank and Mary right and they've and they're they've been living here for a long time but may not have been as in tune with kind of how things have changed right um, to give them a, a, your insight into how all this has how this has played out and 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 I I want to make sure before we and once again one of my jobs I mentioned at the beginning is to keep time and I'm watching a time going oh we're, we're a little close here. Um, before we go, could you also give people, is there, if people wanted to call you or email you, can you just give folks a, a number that they could sure. find you? Let me grab message? my business card off my desk so I can tell you my number. <laughs> it is, um, the town's office is 508-228-7200 and I'm at extension 7344. And right. as far as my email goes, it is K McCarthy. I'm sorry, K McCarthy is my brother. He works at the plus office. My email is krmccarthy at nantucket-ma.gov. I still haven't learned that yet, but <laughs> there's a lot can, to learn. And we can run that on the screen too. So yeah. um, yes. we'll have it in, in a legible form um, for people to take a look at as well. So Allison, thank you very much for doing this. Kamal, thank you so much for doing for doing what you're doing. This is just, it's a really important topic, right? And to have somebody who, from the perspective of all those groups, as well as from the perspective of the government, can be the person who can who can help everybody kind of work through these things is really a wonderful thing. And 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 thank you. And thank you, Allison, because this is really the point of this show is to introduce Kamal, like, like you've introduced so many people on this show, to Frank and Mary and to the folks who are at home who might, who, who you know, may, may not be actively involved in town government, but are really interested in the future of the town. So, And I think it's great that Nantucket has stepped up and has created this position and that we have someone leading it who's obviously very capable and also knowledgeable about the island. So thank you for taking the job. <laughs> so thank you. So those kind words and thank you very much for having me. I really appreciate it. All right. Thank you. And thank you, Allison. Folks, we hope you'd enjoy this. Once again, if you've got any questions, call Kamal. He's really interested. Or if you have any input for him about who he should be listening to on his listening tour. So thank you very much for watching. Thank you, Allison. Thank you, Kamal. Folks, we'll look forward to seeing you on the next installment of Frank and Mary here on Nantucket. Thank you very much.